All right, let's talk about one of the coolest cameras of all time, the perfectly imperfect camera. This is the Polaroid SX70. So the SX70 right now, folded up in its folded up configuration, doesn't really look much like a camera, but watch this, when I go like this, pops open to produce, to reveal I suppose, one of the finest instant cameras ever made. It was produced from 1972 to 1981, and this one here that I've got is pretty much all custom. I'll go into detail about what has been done to it uh, later on in the video. But one of the biggest distinguishing features of the SX70 compared to other cheaper Polaroid cameras and also Instax cameras for that matter, is the fact that this one actually is an SLR. So it has a mirror inside and it allows you to see exactly the shot that you're gonna be getting. This is enormously helpful when it comes to, you know, using this on shoots and, and making sure you get the right composition. Because if you look at an older, or I mean, if you look at a different Polaroid camera, like this one here, the 600, um, this one just has a little viewfinder through it. It just shows you an approximation of the shot that you're gonna get, leading to you usually either chopping someone's head off because you're cropping in too close, or you got way off, and with Polaroid, I mean, you only get one shot. And so you can't really, you know, you end up screwing up shots a lot more often than you would with a camera that's an SLR, where you can actually see what you're framing. I think that in all honesty, everyone should try one of these cameras once in their life. Um, there is something really, really special and unique about shooting on Polaroid. Sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes a bad batch of film might give you some weird results, like uh, the film might just look a little bit off. Sometimes excess ambient temperature, like if it's too hot, might give it a weird color cast. But at the end of the day, you know, this is like, this is the reasons why I love it. You know, you never know what you're gonna get. And when it hits, it hits different. I mean, this thing can produce some absolutely unbelievable results. You know, it's definitely expensive to shoot with. Uh, I think 600 film is around, what is it, 350 per shot? Um, which is pretty expensive, like $3.50 a photo. You definitely have to think carefully about what you're shooting. You only get eight shots per pack as well. However, if you do what I did, and you actually buy one of these little, this little black thing at the bottom here, this is a Reservoir Power Ranger. It's a company from Taiwan that manufactures these. It allows you to use the much cheaper iType film, which is made for modern cameras. And actually, hang on one sec. I think I've got some in the fridge. Let me go grab it, one sec. This is iType film. This is a lot cheaper than 600 film. This actually brings the cost of shooting down to about two, two dollars fifty per shot compared to 600 film at least, which is, you know, really, really good. Like that's definitely it's not cheap, but it's it's a lot better <laughs> than um than using 600 film. And the bonus of it as well is that when you discard these packs, there's no battery inside of them. That's the only difference between iType and 600 film. Is there's a battery inside of it inside a 600 film. It's better for the environment because you're not actually allowed to, well, you shouldn't really be throwing batteries into the bin, you should be getting them recycled. So you can't be bothered basically saving up all your 600 packs and taking them somewhere to get recycled. Shooting iType film, all this is is just recyclable plastic. So you can throw this in a recycling bin, no worries, no issues. You save money and the earth is happy. So my SX70, it's entirely custom and it was built by my friend and Polaroid guru, Jake, the instant camera guy here in Melbourne. I'll run you down just sort of the list of things that we had done to this camera. Um, so for starters, it was completely overhauled. Uh, it actually started off originally as an alpha. Um, it was a manual focus only camera. It had a black faceplate, had my little custom shutter button on there as well. I'll throw a photo up on, on the screen right now so you can just have a look at what it looked like. But um, it's definitely changed a little bit since then. Um, most recently, we basically have a bit of a brain transplant. We took out the whole front of the camera, um, the shutter, um, and we replaced it with this old sonar unit. And yeah, that basically gave this camera autofocus, which is really, really cool. And we also put a silver faceplate on as well, which gives it this nice panda appearance. The other thing we've had done to this camera is we've actually uh, re-skimmed the whole camera in this beautiful Akiasai Japanese leather, which gives it this beautiful sort of all black look. Overall, this camera just produces some absolutely unbelievable results. You know, I love using it on shoots. Um, I usually scan these images in on an Epson V700 and they scan fantastically as well. I mean, especially with the sonar now, I never have to worry about missing focus, which is great too. That was one of the downsides of not having autofocus was that sometimes you would just, you would miss, shot would be blurry. With this thing, it never misses. It's actually fantastic. I mean, the sonar in this thing is unbelievable. I'd love to see like a modern camera with something like this. Um, I, although I don't really think that that's necessary, but it would be cool. It would be cool to see 
a big gold circle on top of the camera sometime soon. I don't know. Anyway. So if you've got an SX70, I would really highly recommend getting it converted to be able to shoot 600 film. Biggest difference between 600 and SX70 film, A, 600 film is much easier to find, B, SX70 is only 160 ISO, whereas 600 film is 640 ISO. Um, given the fact that the lens on this thing can only open up to about f8 aperture, you really, really want that extra ISO light sensitivity because otherwise you really can't shoot in anything but broad daylight. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to convert it. Um, any Polaroid technician can actually do it for you. Um, Jake, I know, does that as part of his sort of overhaul of any SX70 that he gets. Um, you know, you can send him a camera from anywhere in the world and he can get it done for you. His prices are reasonable and I love what he did with this camera. I think it's, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. I'm really, really stoked. I've experimented with printing, enlarging, and displaying Polaroids in, in sort of unique ways. For me, you know, I think when you print them out, at, like blow them up in quite a large size and sort of, you know, frame them and stick them on the wall. I think they look fantastic. Another way that I've actually got them displayed at the moment is with this. This is my Polaroid wall. Um, basically, when people come over, take a photo of them on the Polaroid in front, of, in front of one of these white walls, get them to sign their name in their handwriting, and then it goes on the wall. It's not an original idea. I did shamelessly steal it from Casey Neistat, who had it in his studio in, in New York. But I, I love the way this looks and I love how it adds sort of like a sense of, it's like a physical Facebook, if you will, um, which sounds cringy, but I don't know, it's kind of cool. And then you can look back and people, new people can come and they can be like, oh, I know this person or I know this person. Yeah, I love it. And I'm really looking forward to when this wall sort of fills out a little more and, and I get even more people around. Um, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. I think what I love most about the Polaroid SX70, and in a way, all instant photography, is the individual nature of every single shot. There's only one photo, so while you can photograph it or scan it, there will only be an individual original, giving it this sense of specialness, which makes moments captured on the SX70 and other instant cameras feel like a photographic time capsule from when that moment was captured. I've captured many special moments with this camera, and while you never know what you're gonna get when you press that satisfying shutter button, I love having them in these beautiful albums. You know, this really is the perfectly imperfect camera. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you liked it. Um, leave a like, leave a comment. I love hearing your thoughts. And thank you so much for watching.